We are going to start the Yisker service. Leela, Leela min kol bircha tavashirata. Beyond. Beyond. There are some things in our lives that are beyond. So much of love and life and loss are beyond words. Like the master of the world God, beyond, Leela. And these 10 days, we live in this space, Leela u Leela. Beyond what is already beyond, so far out of reach. There's this story in the, in the Babylonian Talmud, Tractate Brachot. The story is about Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. When he gets sick and he is close to death, his students come to visit him before he dies. And when his students see them, they begin to cry. And he begins to cry. And so they said to him, they said this remarkable thing to him. They said, Ner Yisrael, O Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, light of Israel, Amud Hayimini, strong right hand, Patish Hechazak, Hebrew hammer, Rabbi Yochanan, Mipne Ma Ata Boche, why are you crying? Why are you crying? You have lived an extraordinary life. You have become more than most of us could ever imagine. Why? And he says to him, to them, look, at the end of my life, if I were coming before a human king, flesh and blood, who's here today and gone tomorrow, and that king, that royalty were mad at me, that anger could not last forever. And I could seek to appease that king. If I was imprisoned by a hu another human being, I might still be able to find a way out. And even if I were sentenced to death, it's possible that I could offer a bribe, something to turn my fate from what it looks like. But now that I am coming before the master of the world, God eternal, Shehu chai v'kayam le'olam, everlasting, if God's anger comes at me, there's nothing I can say. Ka'as, ka'as olam. And if God, the master of the world, imprisons me, isoro isor olam, it is everlasting. There is no way out. Ve'im mitatenu mitato mitat olam. And if I am sentenced to die, that will be eternal. There is nothing I can say and no bribe that can sway the mind of the master of the world. Hi, hi. You're leaving? Okay, bye. That's kind of sad for me. It's the best. Best. It feels even more right during Yisker. It really does. If it's the master of the world, it feels beyond. Leela. It feels like too much. So his student said to him, Oh, now we understand why you are crying. Could you bless us? Could you offer us a blessing? And he says to them, May it be God's will that the fear of heaven is upon you like the fear of humanity. May you one day be able to know what it means to shake and quake more before the master of the world, before another human being. Look, what Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai is fundamentally saying or trying to communicate to us is that there are moments that are too far out of control for them not to overwhelm us in emotion. There is something about being able to stand before another person knowing there's maybe there's just one more thing I could say or do. Like finality doesn't mean finality in the same way 
that it does when we are thinking about Le'ela, that which is beyond. And what Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai is saying is, there is something for which I have no control and will never be able to control, and it's what happens after I'm gone. And for that, for that I am weeping. David Kessler, who's probably the world's foremost expert on grief, he wrote, anticipatory grief, anticipatory grief is a feeling we get about what the future holds when we're uncertain. Usually it centers around death. We feel it when someone gets a dire diagnosis or when we have a normal thought, the normal thought that someday we'll lose a parent or grandparent. Anticipatory grief is also more broadly imagined futures. There's a storm coming, there's something bad out there. When I can feel something and I know it will come and I have no control over it, the grief kicks in right at that moment. That's what Rabbi Yochanan experienced, anticipatory grief, before the, the term was coined. And it's what we all experience so often, anxiety over the unknown, a pulsing awareness that so, so much of life is out of our control. Le'ela, beyond our agency. Le'ela u le'ela, beyond any agency. Likely, for some of us, our own deaths evoke this kind of loss, anticipatory grief, but certainly for each of us, it's also that ever-present fear over life without our loved one nearby. Even when we know the end is approaching or even if we are ready for it, whatever that means, competently anticipating life after loss is le'ela, it is beyond reach, it is too eternal, and for those of us who have been living with loss, for quite some time or a week, and we are all in here, quite some time and a week and less than a week, it never goes away. Grief waxes and wanes, it peaks or it lies hauntingly dormant. And when that wave washes over us sometimes, it can feel like too much to bear, too hard to control, le'ela, beyond, overwhelming on the inside and out. And then our tradition provides a communal circle of comfort, of nechama, of consolation. That, right here. Today, we don't wait for the wave to come. You know, that unexpected moment in which you see a glimpse of somebody you lost and you are uncontrollably sad. Today, we invoke it. We draw it near. What is Yisker? Yisker is the moment, Yisker is the moment for which so many of us, no matter what else we will miss throughout the entire Jewish year, we can't imagine not being here for this, for this, for this moment to invoke and then remember. Bell Hooks wrote in a book called All About Love, rarely if ever are any of us healed in isolation. Healing is an act of communion Love invites us to grieve for the dead as a ritual of mourning and as celebration. We need not contain grief when we use it as a means to intensify our love for the dead and the dying and for those who remain alive. We need not, we need not contain our grief when we use it as a means to intensify our love. Love is the primary force in the world which brings le'ela min kol birchata u'shirata, that which is beyond words, beyond expression, beyond control, a little bit closer to earth. It brings out there into in here, into our beating, loving hearts. Last week, my sister was here last week for Rosh Hashanah. My sister was deeply connected to my mom. Like, it was palpable. In a way that my siblings and I often admired and sometimes maybe we're a little bit kind of maybe jealous I don't know but it was anyways when she was here she wore my mother's clothing the entire time Rosh Hashanah 1 Erev Rosh Hashanah Rosh Hashanah 2 she's wearing my mom's clothing and to watch her walk in the room you cannot help but have one of those waves come over you. Happens a lot when we're not expecting it.
it's confusing. Mom is there, mom is not there. She's Laela, she's beyond, but she's here too. I know that, I feel it, I see it, maybe I just need it. There is no possible way to express sometimes what our loss does to us when we are confronted with who it is, with who it is that is no longer in our life. And the only place that I could put that feeling in that moment so that I could keep leading the service, the only place that I could put the years long but still present loss, the uncertainty, the only place was here. I knew that in one week I would be able to nestle it into this book and these words with this very group of people. You all, this eternity is Le'ela. It is beyond, but it is also Bitoch. It is between us. It is between us. I knew in one week's time Yom Kippur would give me just the right vessel with which to sit with it all for a moment, this moment with you, us together, love the very connective tissue that allows us to invoke our grief into this room and share it together. And that is what we are gonna do. You all have your story too. Might not be a cre creepy one like my sister wearing my mom's clothes. <laughs> Sorry, Nina, but I wasn't gonna let that go without some kind of big brother jab. You all have your stories too. You have your stories of grief and you have your stories of life and you have your stories of love and some of them are painful and some of them are joyous and some will make you laugh and some will make you cry. And some will make you just want to hug or receive a hug. So let's hold it all together. Let's bring Laela, that which, uh, that which is untouchable, into focus, if only for a moment. Kessler, Dr. Kessler also taught us that emotion needs motion. Emotion needs motion. It is embodied. If we allow feelings to happen, and in some kind of orderly way, it empowers us. Judaism could not agree more. Emotions need sacred order, and this is our sacred order. This is Yisker. This is where we take it and we put it out of our hearts, and we let the song and the words and each other hold it together. Oh, oh, oh. 